Hey what's up folks this is GK so it's been long time it's been one year since I have created GK videos so if you haven't watched my GK with GK series feel free to watch the playlist on that and in this video I'm going to talk about the GK private clusters so basically I'm going to go over what is a private cluster and then I'm going to create the private cluster and also I will show you how to authorize your network to talk to the private cluster from your kubectl. So by default, when you create a cluster from the G cloud or when you create a cluster from the console, you create a public cluster and it is not secure and it is not the way that is created in a company or in an enterprise. So in a public cluster, your control node is accessible over internet. And also the worker nodes will have the public IP addresses. It's a huge security risk, especially when your workloads are in the production. Whereas in the private cluster, you can control the access to your private cluster from a specific IP address and also your worker nodes will not have access to the internet, meaning your worker nodes will only have the private IP addresses. So if you see in this picture, whenever you create the cluster, the private cluster, it is created in your VPC. Let's say that is your, you know, my GKE cluster one and you have your cluster nodes, which are your worker nodes and the connectivity between this and the control plane. Again, control plane is created in the Google managed project because control plane is managed by the Google cloud. So they have their own VPC for the control plane and it is peered through the private network, uh, meaning the communication between your worker nodes and the control plane happens over a private network. And this is what even Google recommends whenever you're trying to create clusters and use your clusters for the production workloads. Again, in the private cluster as well, you have three ways of securing access to the endpoint. So the first is the public endpoint access disabled. Uh, this is where you're going to completely tighten your private cluster, meaning you will not have any public internet access to the private cluster. And this is used in the enterprise companies or in the companies where they have direct connection between their data center or uh, direct connection between their network to the Google cloud network. So that way they use VPN or, you know, they use their uh, direct connectivity from the data center to connect to the cluster. And second way is that the public endpoint access is enabled, but it is enabled only for certain authorized networks. So in here, we're going to give access to only specific network to connect to that endpoint. And I'm going to show you about this one in this demo. The third option is the public endpoint access enabled and authorized networks disabled, meaning that anybody from public anybody from internet can access your endpoint. And this is the least secure way out of all these three. So as I was discussing before, the first option has the highest level of restriction access to the control plane because uh, nobody from internet can access this. And if you are working in a company, they use the first option and that way they have VPNs or, you know, they have direct connectivity to the GCP's network. So they can connect directly from their laptop to the cluster through their tunnel. Now in the second option, and this is where I'm going to show the demo, uh, which is not highly restricted, but also not highly available over internet. Meaning this is like in between both of these two, where you can give restricted access to the control plane from both internal and external IP address that you define. And obviously the third one is where you're going to give access to the control plane from any IP address. And this is not what Google recommends as well. So we're going to look at this one. So we're going to see in this demo how I'm going to create this private cluster with the authorized networks enabled. So without further ado, let's dive into the demo. So if you are creating the GK cluster for the first time using the G cloud, and this is what I would recommend as well, doing from the G cloud command line interface instead of doing it from the UI. So if you are using this for the first time, you have to install kubectl for that. The command is G cloud components install kubectl, which is what I have just done it. So to verify that I can do kubectl get nodes of, and there's nothing to get here. So now I'm going to make sure that my G cloud config is set properly. And as you can see here, I have us east one, us one B east one B. And then it is configured to the cloud advocate and YouTube demo is the project, which is what I want to use. All right, so let's navigate to the Kubernetes service, which is GKE Kubernetes engine. 
then here you see that I do not have any clusters that were created before and now let's go to the command that I'm going to use so basically it is gcloud container clusters create cluster one so we're not going to use kubectl here obviously because we are going to create the cluster and that happens over gcloud I'm going to create the subnet and enable master authorized networks and this is the most important to enable that option for us to access the control plane over an authorized network and then we also have to give the range for the master IP and I'm going to give only one node so I'm going to copy this command and then let's see what happens when I paste this here that's fine I'm going to do gcloud auth login and I'm going to take this URL allow please copy this code switch to your application and paste it there copy this one and paste it here your current project is so and so so now let's try to run this again all right so the command went fine uh, if i go back to the console you should see if i refresh this one the cluster one is getting created so i'm gonna pause the video and i'll resume once this is done all right so now the cluster is created and i have one node you can see here it has the master ip which is of public ip address and it has one node the node version and number of nodes one okay perfect so now we have the cluster running the next thing that i wanted to do is i want to connect to the cluster so for that you can click on here and get the connection string from here all right so copy this one and then paste it here so now my cube config is configured to talk to the cluster so now let's do kubectl get nodes so now what will happen is that it will time out eventually saying that you know it cannot access the endpoint right basically what we have done here is since we have created the private cluster the kubectl cannot access the control plane unless you authorize my network so this is what i'm going to show you now how to authorize my laptop to talk to the private cluster so i'm going to do control c here and then i'm going to go to find my public ip address which is what is my ip and this is the public ip address that i have so go back to your cluster click on the cluster here search for authorized networks so you see here control plane authorized networks edit control plane authorized networks and authorize and add an authorized network here i'm going to say home network or something and then that's 32 save changes all right so now we have added my public ip address to authorize to talk to control plane so i'm going to go back to the cloud shell and then here try kubectl get nodes again now you can see that it is able to get the nodes so this way now you have authorized the public IP address to talk to the control plane. This is much secure way instead of just creating a, a public cluster. So now the other thing I wanted to show you is go back to the compute engine. And here you see that the node has only internal IP address. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to enable internet to the internal IP address because so whenever you deploy something to the Kubernetes, you might have to pull something from internet, like basically some Docker images or something that your pod might require as part of your Helm charts or, you know, as part of your deployment. So I'm going to show you how to enable internet to this node. And then we're going to see how to create those NAT routes and all those things in the upcoming videos. And the other important thing that I'm going to paste in the description 
is going through this documentation. It is very well documented about the private clusters and what are the advantages of the private clusters and how to create them and what are the different flags that you can use to create the private clusters and stuff. So stay tuned to this channel. I'm going to create a lot of GK with GK series like I've done before. Do subscribe to this channel and click on the like button. And most importantly, once you have done practicing this, go back to your GKE and then do delete your cluster else it's going to be very expensive. All right. So that's all I wanted to show. It's a short video, but I'm going to come up with more such short videos on the GKE. Thank you again so much for watching this video. Take care. Bye.